if you just tuned into WABC and are saying, so what the hell's going on? Uh, this is my 20th anniversary show. I'm Dan Ingram, and uh, the honor group of the day. Oh, my goodness. They just walked in with a, an, uh, oh, my, would you look at that? Oh this is an Atwater Kent radio, super heterodyne, and, and it's, it says, presented to Dan Ingram, <laughs> another day, another dollar. The music's on us, the joke's on you. <laughs> WABC, a radio station on the occasion of his 520th bi-monthly paycheck. Ah, I love it. <laughs> As New York's number one radio personality by the A-Team, Harry Lang, Wynn Lloyd, Saul Rockman, Bob Deitch, George Berger, Bill Moser, Jim McGuire, Gene Maxwell, Kiki Hooper, Frank D'Elia, George Musgrave, and Rick James. Now, isn't that nice? Thank you, gentlemen. I applaud you with one Oh, single a flood. That's very nice. That is absolutely beautiful. Oh, that is, is that mine or did you just read it? And Edwater can does it work and everything? Yeah. If I turned it on now, could I listen to myself and go home? <laughs> that is beautiful. It's one of those old, you since this is a radio, I'll describe it. It's one of those old fashioned kind of pyramid shaped radios. What do you call it? Hmm? Cathedral radio. Cathedral shape. That's it. Cathedral radio. It's an Atwater can and it's for real. We got That's from the guy that makes the phone system. The guy that makes the phone <laughs> system. <laughs> Mr. Marconi. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. And a, and a nice, beautifully engraved plaque. Gee, guys, that's, uh, that's wonderful. Now, you may not know this, but I'll tell you something at home. Uh, I have a... Uh, I wear earphones. No, it's a single phone. It's a very old earphone. And the reason it... Uh, thank you. Uh, the reason I wear a single earphone is because when I first started in radio, there was a guy by the name of uh, George, uh, oh, what was that, George uh, Chandler, who was the chief engineer of WALK in Patchogue, Long Island. He said, uh, he was from Maine, he said, anybody wears two earphones falls in love with their own voice. And uh, <laughs> I wear one, and I, I've always worn one. It's an old, cheap one, and it sounds lousy, and I like it that way. But uh, five years ago, they, the folks around here who really count, the engineering staff, got together and got me a gold jack for my earphones. It's the only one I know of in radio, and uh, I use that all the time, and I use it every day, and this uh, means at least as much, if not considerably more than that. Thank you, guys, really. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm really, I'm touched. Um, I was about to say something facetious, but uh, <laughs> I can't do that. There is one thing I wanted to play for you. There was a, a promo on, which is the first time I ever came across the music I now use as my closing music, and I've used since then. Uh, this was called the Gasser ID, and it ran for, I think, 14 years off and on on the station, and it sounded like this. WABC, serving New York and America with music in tempo with today. on the Radio 77, WABC, the Springer in New York Town, the only station with young ideas for New York. Yeah, that was fun to do that kind of radio. We're doing this kind of radio now, which is kind of a retrospective as what's been happening. And Rick James, who has been diligently digging up what happened in the past, is here with another five-year budget of goodies that happened. What's Where were we? 71, I guess? Ready for 71. A controversy began April 20th of that year. That would continue through the decade, continues even today. The U.S. Supreme Court in 1971 ruled unanimously that the courts could order the busing of school students to achieve racial balance in schools. On the 3rd of May, the anti-Vietnam War protest would reach yet another high as thousands of anti-war militants arrived in Washington, D.C. Attempting to disrupt the business of government, they said the Nixon administration vowed that would not happen. 12,000 arrests were made. Most of those arrested were later released. This year, 1971, was the year when 18-year-olds received the right to vote as the 26th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was implemented. At the U.N., another controversy there, Communist China was admitted as a member. On to 1972, New Yorkers began a restoration project at the South Street Seaport. In February of 1972, President Nixon made an unprecedented trip to mainland China. In another move that remains controversial to this date, the British assumed direct rule of Northern Ireland in 1972. It would be a political explosive year, as we would learn later. It was also another year for political violence as gunshots filled Alabama Governor George Wallace as he campaigned for president in Laurel, Maryland, May 15th, leaving him paralyzed for life. On June 17th of 1972, some men broke into the Democratic National Committee's Washington headquarters. It was located in a Washington building known as Watergate. Mm. In September, the tragedy of Munich, terrorists killing 11 members of, his, of Israel's Olympic team. In 73, the year New York is dedicated to the World Trade Center. 
the world's tallest buildings for just a very short while. President Richard Nixon began his second term after a huge landslide win over Senator George McGovern. The Nixon supporters had chanted four more years. That wasn't to be. By April 30th of that year, Mr. Nixon was on television accepting responsibility for the Watergate break-in, but not the blame. Gone from his administration as of that date, H.R. Haldeman, John Ehrlichman, and John Dean. On October 10th of 73, Vice President Spiro Agnew resigned because of separate allegations against him for political corruption. Ten days later, on October 20th, 1973, the Saturday Night Massacre sees the firing of Special Watergate Prosecutor Archibald Cox and the resignations of Attorney General Elliot Richardson and his deputy William Ruckelshaus. 1973 also sees Indians taking hostages at Wounded Knee, South Dakota, King Constantine expelled from Greece, a military coup in Chile that kills President Allende, and the biggest Arab-Israeli war which begins with an attack on Israel on Yom Kippur. Later, Egypt and Israel will sign a ceasefire accord negotiated by the U.S. 74. In New York, veteran poli uh, politician Abe Beam takes office as mayor of New York City. He's a Democrat. He has realized his dream of a lifetime, not realizing the dream will become a nightmare as the House of Cards comes tumbling down. On February 5th of the year 1974, we start talking about Patty Hearst. She's kidnapped by the Symbionese Liberation Army. The political stove is really cooking in Washington now. On July 30th, 1974, the House Judiciary Committee adopts three articles of impeachment, charging President Nixon with obstruction of justice, failure to uphold laws, and refusal to produce material subpoenaed by that committee. On August 8th, 1974, more history. President Nixon tells a nationwide TV and radio audience he'll resign at 12 noon the next day. On August 9th, Gerald Ford becomes President of the United States. Mr. Ford perhaps undoes himself politically less than a month later as he announces a full, free, and absolute pardon for Mr. Nixon. I have Mr. Nixon's resignation on videotape at home. I play it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nixon's resignation led to my firing from a very good job, but that's a different story. No, tell me about it. Hmm? You want to tell me about it? Well, I think you know the story. I do, but the people out there don't. Would you rather just no, let it go? No, no, I don't care. I, I worked at a radio station in Chicago and um, well, had a semi-management job. Yeah. The um, news director... Happened to pick that day to be out of town. The general manager walks in, and he says, now this was a, a rock and roll station unlike WABC. He says, you know we're in the sweeps, which means ratings. Right. He says, is, and I quote him, Tricky going to quit tonight? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think so. He says, we don't mention it on the air here until after midnight. I don't care what you want to do. You can tape the resignation, play it back at midnight. Because of the ratings? Because of the ratings. He says, if... If those turkeys, referring to his listeners, <laughs> hear the president's resigning, they'll switch over to the all-news station. Oh, Lord. Really? I, um, I don't know. I, one of the few times in my life I rose to a moment of principle and said I wasn't going to put out any such memo. If he wanted to put out, he could. He did. I was uh, bumping um, overnight news <laughs> immediately thereafter. Oh, Lord. Well, congratulations. I yes. respect you for that. I made it 1975. The year begins with the conviction in Washington federal court of former Attorney General Mitchell, White House aide H.R. Haldeman, John Ehrlichman, Robert Mardian, on charges of covering up the facts of Watergate. May 15th, Cambodia seizes the American merchant ship Mayaguez. President Ford orders a military operation to recover it. The operation succeeds, but 38 U.S. servicemen die in the effort. June 5th, 1975, the Suez Canal reopened for the first time in eight years since that six-day war. During the year 1975, two attempts will be made on the life of President Ford, both involving handguns, both would-be assassins female. The president escapes unharmed both times. September of this year, Patty Hearst, now a fugitive, is captured by the FBI. By late summer of 1975, the House of Cards collapses in New York City. We're on the verge of bankruptcy. I guess I have to mention March 30th. Um, oh. A newsman who, just a short time before, been out of work, arrives in, um, in New York. Oh, yes. Debuts on this station. Who knows what happened to the guy? And, uh, <laughs> He's sitting in your uh, pants. <laughs> <laughs> so that's him. You know, I'm, I'm still, I still feel bad because I've got two headphones. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right. You're wearing two earphones. I didn't realize it. But, but you, I, I do, I do want to say, voices, I. I do want to say something that that you don't know. You're responsible. Oh. For my news career, and you say, how's that possible? Well, I will say, how's that possible? Because I don't think I'm responsible for anybody. You, you've got the talent to do it. Well, I thought I had the talent to be a disc jockey. Is what I, and that's how I started in the business. That's and, funny. Uh, I started doing news. <laughs> <laughs> and back then, I had the silly notion, if you can't be the best, uh, you know, might find something else to do. Unfortunately, I'd never heard the Ray Taylor tape. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, they played that earlier. That I, was awful. <laughs> I came to New York, heard Big Dan Ingram, and thought, 
No way, kid. Find yourself another way to oh, do it. Dude, oh, come on. That's, that's all true. Oh, that's, that's funny. That's, that's all true. But in the meantime, uh, we have... Oh, yes, they have one of our little anniversary jingles here. Incredulous Twinies. Congratulations, Dan. WABC. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I, I love jingles like that. We had a jingle for Howard Cosell that we played just once on the air. It says, the gifted one stinks here. WABC? Hi-ho. 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 <laughs> Unfortunately, Howard was listening. <laughs> uh, he's a wonderful guy. Anyway, the record that came in in 1970 as the number one tune is a tune that was rejected by three other singers before they finally took it to B.J. Thomas. Raindrops are falling on my head And just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed Nothing seems to fit are falling on my head they keep falling so I just did me some talking to the sun and I said I didn't like the way he got things done sleeping on the job those raindrops are falling on my head they keep falling but there's one Nothing's worrying me It won't be long Till happiness steps up to greet me Raindrops keep falling on my head But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon Not for me, cause I'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining Because I'm free, nothing's worrying me Ah, that's good. That's raindrops keep falling on my head. And my mother is on the phone, who just called from Malvern, Long Island, where I grew up after we moved from Flushing to Malvern. And uh, hello there. I, I'm not going to put you on the air because uh, <laughs> I don't have to pay you. But <laughs> <laughs> so you you wanted to send a telegram, and they couldn't send it today, and you called instead. Ah, uh, you're a good mommy. Nah, thank you. You're, uh, you're going to read it to me now, what you're going to send a telegram? Go ahead. Wait, wait a second, I can't quite hear you yet. Could you, uh, could you say that again, please? And our love and congratulations on your 20th anniversary at WABC. That's beautiful. Thank you. Best wishes for the next 20. Ah. We're prejudiced, of course, since we've loved you ever since the doctor said it's a boy. Ah. You were worried I was going to be a girl? No, no, no. (laughs) Well, you just gave your congratulations to me and a couple of million people on the air. Oh, good. Thank you for calling. Okay. I didn't expect to get you. I'll talk to you later on. How wonderful. Take care. Oh, we love the program. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Well, isn't that nice? My mommy called. Now, if I could get my wife to call back because the phones are working now, I'd like to put her on the air because I know she's listening. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, we were about to do this. Dan Ingram! 
Well, that was spectacular. <laughs> that was what you call part of a jingle. That's an edit. 18 minutes before 6 o'clock. That's the first time check I've done since 3 o'clock. I just realized. <laughs> the temperature, I have no idea what temperature it is. It's uh, cool in the studio and wherever you are. We have something called What's an Ingram? That's on this list here. We'll find out what this is. Oh, uh, what do you think of Dan Ingram? He's in charge of a mess, I think. He keeps saying it's a mess. Is that the guy? Well, I guess he's the guy who plays music. I talk no English. Is it an animal? I don't know. He's a WABC guy. Uh, Dan Ingram. What's a Dan Ingram? It's a fantastic cocktail. An aborigine. Sounds like a popsicle to me. Sounds like a wristwatch. <laughs> who? He's a great lover. Folks, he's really one of the heavies. <laughs> he's a newscaster for ABC, isn't he? I think he comes on in the uh, Late Eight and the Late Show. I think he's kind of crazy. It's kind of balding up on top. That Ingram, he may be a political figure. Some new kind of soap. <laughs> I haven't pictured as kind of a big guy. Well, his voice sounds tall, dark, and handsome. He's probably short, dumpy, and fat. Do you know how many years Dan's been at ABC? Well, 30, I guess. Happy anniversary, Dan, from WABC. Uh, yeah, I, okay. Uh, you, you don't want me to put you on the air? You, don't, you really don't want to be on the air? You sure about that? I you really don't. Why? Why Why didn't you want to be on the air, darling? Oh, darling, please. Uh, <laughs> I think you sound great on the air. Oh, and I love you too, sweetheart. I love you, darling. Thanks for calling. Bye, darling. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. She's gone. Okay. <laughs> I think I scared her. <laughs> That's my wife, Jeannie. And uh, later on in the show, about an hour from now, I have something to play that also has her on it, which I know she'll want to listen to because it was probably the highlight of my entire career. But that's about an hour from now. In the meantime, we have something that I haven't heard in so long. I've forgotten what it is, but I do remember the title. Let's hear it. The Oz Jackson Five, Lynn and Pretty Dirt Band, Wilson Pike and Tina Turner, Gordon the Temptations, the Partridge Family, All Hit Music Radio, WABC. It's so hard to talk that way, you know. You have to take a deep breath and put one finger in one nostril and keep putting it in and out of each nostril. It's one time on April Fool's Day, uh, we had uh, the day uh, uh, they fooled me by having me not on the air. Uh, about an hour later, Sammy Kay walked in the station with a record he was plugging, and they put him on the air. And it got to be a thing. A year later, uh, they did something else I've forgotten. But one year, I remember when... Uh, Let's see, uh, it was David Fry, and this was prior to all the Watergate stuff. And David used to do, and still does, a great imitation of uh, then-President Nixon. And this is what happened on April Fool's Day. I believe it was uh, 67, was it? I've forgotten. I don't forgot. 72, was it? Was it that late? 71, 70, somewhere around there, and this is what happened that it's, day. It's uh, four minutes past two, and it's April Fool's Day in the Ingram thing, and I guess that's about it. Heavy, it won, it won, it won, it won, it won, it won. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> and now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, right, yeah. of which I'm certain. <laughs> I've lived a life that's full. Yeah. I've traveled each and every highway. What the hell is it? But more, <laughs> much more than this, I did it my way. <laughs> Regrets, Just go I've had a few. <laughs> but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do. And I saw it through without exemption. I planned yes. each charted course. Yes, sir. Each careful step right. along the byway. Right, right, right. Yes. And more, much yes. more than this. What? I did it my way. Who the hell is this? Yes, there were times, I'm sure you know, when I bit off more than I could chew. Yes. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. <laughs> I faced it all, and I stood tall, and did it my way. Is that enough? Thank you very much, sir. Sir. I've loved. Oh, for crying out. I've laughed and cried. Yes. I've had my fill. My share of losing And now As tears subside yes. I find it all 
so amusing. Would you like to quit the business, sir? To think I did all that. Right. And right. may I say, right. not in a shy way. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no, not me. I did it my way. Is this George Williams? For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, and he has not. Oh. To say the thing he truly feels. You mean not the words our president? Of one who kneels. The record shows. I took those clothes. <laughs> and let me make it perfectly clear. Right. I did it my way. Mr. President. Uh, hey, Jowls, baby. <laughs> I guess he got my telegram. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, David Fry imitating our beloved. It's uh, seven minutes past two <laughs> on the Ingram Mess. That's what happened on the air that day. And David came in and we talked for a little while. And it was, uh, it was kind of fun. He's an awfully nice guy and a very talented guy. It was nice to bring that back. We've had a lot of crazy things happen on the air. But uh, we'll be getting to more of that stuff. In the meantime, coming up next, we have the number one tune of 
WABC Stan Ingram. Anything else? Or is that it? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we got on the phone with us right now uh, a chap who was uh, my engineer for a long time and is now the founder, owner, creator, and general uh, impresario of the Eventide Clockworks. He is known to me as uh, the Evil Ox. He is known to you as Richard Factor. And uh, Richard, how is the electronics business? Absolutely wonderful. That's good. I'm glad. Have you? Uh, you this is the man who invented the Heen and the Hearn, which you may have remembered from. <laughs> That's, that's how he invented it, too. <laughs> he used to be a trumpet player, it sounds like. Anyway, Richard, I'm glad you called to say hello. And um, what was the other... Th oh, the, the time that you got a uh, what was called a harmonizer. And would you explain what a harmonizer is? That was another April Fool's Day thing. Yeah, that is uh, a pitch change device that uh, makes people sound very, very funny indeed. Made me sound like Mickey Mouse on the air. Or backwards. Right, or George uh, uh, well, you know, big tape voice, I guess. But anyway, you did that to me on the air, and I, I can't find a tape, and I know you got it someplace in your in your uh, multi-faceted files. But uh, I want to thank you for calling up and wish you continued good success with Eventide Clockworks because it proves that there is life after WABC. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Richard. Well, it's been a pleasure, Dan. Good talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. He was my engineer for a long time, and he's one hell of a nice guy, and I just wanted to put him on the air. I am going to do right now my favorite jingle of all the jingles of all time that I ever played. This is for all the jingle freaks. I won't talk over it. And it's, uh, it, you always had somebody talking over it, so you never really knew what it sounded like. And this is my all-time favorite WABC jingle. Let's go, go, go. Talked over it. I forgot to go, go, go in the end. Well, Jingle Freaks, I'm sorry. You'll have one little fluff from Ingram on top of that. They're out there recording him. It's time now to find out what's happening around the world and around the block. Check up on traffic. Rick James is here, who's doing a hell of a job today. Thank you, Rick. Uh, and uh, we'll have the news. And then uh, I'm going to have a record that was, uh, let's see, which record was that? Uh, I believe it was the record from 1972. Yeah, it was a number one tune out of 1972. And after that, I'm going to play something for you that contains an obscenity. I almost got fired. I'll play that for you. That's coming up. But right now, this. WABC Action Central News. Transit officials now believe that human error is the culprit in the crash of two number two IRT subway trains near the Utica Avenue station in Brooklyn this afternoon. I'm Rick James. It's 74 degrees at WABC, New York's radio station. Hello again, everyone. Howard Cosell speaking of sports. This is Howard Cosell. The most music on 77 WABC. WABC, New York. Thank you, gang. <laughs> 20 years I've been here, and 20 years I've watched my sideburns get gray, and <laughs> hair by agonizing hair. But I don't believe in the mirror. I think the mirror lies. I do think the mirror lies, because somewhere in my head, I'm about, uh, oh, I used to be 18 for a long time. Now I'm somewhere around 29. You really want to know? I'm 46. I started here when I was 26, 20 years ago, in uh, 1961. And one of the things I wanted to say before I went any further in the show, I suppose more properly this belongs at the end, but there's some other things I want to do, is I would like to just take a moment to pay respect to the memory of a dear friend, the man who hired me in New York. And uh, frankly, if you listen to the tape that I gave him from which he hired me, I'm amazed that he heard anything in there worth hiring, because I listened to it today and it's uh, pretty poor. Uh, the late Hal Neal, he's responsible for me being here. You're responsible for me staying here, but he's the guy who brought me in, 
gave me the latitude to do some things that, uh, well, a lot of people wouldn't really like to have happen on their radio station in those days. He let me have a little bit of room to fool around with, and uh, it made the difference, because I think the one thing that I did in those days that I like to think I do now is try to talk to you honestly and openly and say something It might be maybe a little hoo-hoo-hoo, but nothing that's going to hurt anybody. And he had the courage and, I guess, the foresight to let me do that. If it hadn't been for Hal Neal, I'd still be somewhere in Kansas City. Probably making a good buck and having a good time, but not at this level. Hal, wherever you are, I love you. You are my friend. Thank you. Now let's go back to 1972. Sullivan, the number one tune in 1972 on WABC. WABC's Dan Ingram. I always felt that WABC's Dan Ingram meant that, meant that I was in the clutches of this station somehow. <laughs> they almost did once. They got mad at me for this, and uh, I'm going to play it again because I think we can say this on the air. At least I hope we can. Ever since Archie Brunker started saying G's instead of G and Helen Dam and all those words. Well, I think I'm over my Helen Dam quotient for the R. I better cool it. They're only allowed one. But, uh, uh, I, I'll tell you the story of this, and uh, you'll hear it again. And this is what happened on the air, because I, I goofed and said what I was trying not to say. See, the thing was, you weren't supposed to say that word, which, uh, well, it had to do with fecal matter. And uh, <laughs> uh, I was in my agent's office, and there was a lady who has since passed away, bless her soul, name of Meryl Pecker, and she did auditioning for commercials. 
And we were sitting there talking to each other, and the joke was, nobody's named Meryl, which was supposedly funny, you know, those cynical people in showbiz. And then I said to myself, well, what happens if Meryl Pecker married Joe Cocker? She'd be Meryl Pecker Cocker. And then I said, how about if she married the heir to the Smucker's Jam fortune? She'd be Meryl Pecker Cocker Smucker. And it went on like that. It was all very funny and very innocent and kind of risque, but not, you know, nothing really, uh, not bad. And that got on my mind as I was walking over here because my agent used to be on Madison Avenue. He's down on, uh, he's the best agent in the world. His name is Don Buckwald. And if you're in the business and want a great agent, uh, he's the guy who can get you to start him because he's great. Anyway, I walked from his old office on uh, Madison Avenue over to 6th. And I was thinking about... Smucker's Jam and Schick House Franks and other words like that. And this is what happened, and I blew it. News before the hour, a service of ABC News on most music on WABC New York. WABC, standing ground. Go, go, go! I had a, I had a, I had a, what do you call a nightmare last night? And I uh, dreamt that we had feedback is what I dreamt. There we do. I dreamt that I got a commercial, and the manufacturers of Smucker's Jam and Chick House Meats and Schlitz Beer all got together and formed a corporation called the Schlick Shit House Chick, Chick House uh, uh, Smuck, I said it wrong, didn't I? <laughs> I tried. Well, it's been a nice career. <laughs> I want to tell you, I got cold. And I hate to tell you where I got cold. <laughs> but I would, <laughs> took a couple days, stuck my head in the next day, and when I came on the air, I did a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, tongue twisters just to prove I could do them. You know, like the awfulest thistle, the successful thistle, sifted and sifting, and syphil of unsifted thistles, thrust 3,000 thistles through the thick of his thumb. See the thousand sifting, and syphil of unsifted thistles, thrust not 3,000 thistles through the thick of thy thumb. Success to the successful thistle sifter. Well, I can say that, but I couldn't say... I'm not going to say it because I'll blow it. <laughs> well, let's move on. And in terms of music, let's get up to 1973. And one of the prettiest number one tunes of all. Incidentally, I must remind you again, this weekend we're bringing you the songs that reached number one in New York all weekend long on New York's radio station, our number one song weekend. And this was the number one song of 1973. Dan Ingram, W. Music Radio. ABC's drumming my face with his feet. Killing me softly with his song, killing me softly with his song, telling my whole life with his words, killing me softly with his song. Dan 
on the uh, telephone right now with uh, the man who has been somewhat responsible for my fortunes over the years. His name is Don Buckwald. And, John, you're on the air. Oh, uh, me? You, you, on, on, uh, right on the very electric radio theater, the Ingram thing. I can't believe that. I'm really touched by this broadcast, you know, the accolades from all your fellow workers there and the whole thing. And I just want to say I really respect you now more than ever. And because of that, our company is going to reduce their commission to 10% starting <laughs> Monday. Wait a minute. You're only supposed to have been taking 10% all these years. Oh, but I blew it. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Don, thanks for calling. Good talking to you. Bye-bye. He's a nice man. He's not only a very talented man, but he's a kind of an agent that can sit down and talk with people very rationally and bilk them. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> he's a good chap. There's something very, very special that I want to play for you, but first I want to do the record that started the whole disco craze, which is an interesting milestone in our career here at WABC. It was probably the first really, truly disco-type record. It was by the Hughes Corporation, and it was the number one tune in 1974. Damn Ingram. Damn Ingram show. Like Howard Hughes was about to sit down when I heard it. Uh, oh, yes, I remember this jingle. We used to use this a lot for about, we had it for about two years, then we dropped it for some reason. I don't think the general manager liked it or something, some reason like that. It was just an idea I had, and somebody recorded it, so I used it, and this is the way it sounded. Dan Ingram Electric Radio is on the air. It was dull, come to think of it. It was, it was really going too far. I am a disc jockey. My parents, both of them, are musicians, and uh, they live in Malvern, Long Island, and uh, like I said, I went to Lindner Place School as a youngster, about sorry, seven years old when we moved there, and uh, I remember very vividly what time we moved there because uh, my dad was up in the attic, he was putting in some insulation, and it was December 7th, 
and the news came over about Pearl Harbor, and he stood up and hit his head on a roof beam. He was very disturbed. And I thought after all these years of being a disc jockey at one time, a couple years back, that since my dad was a musician and since he used to sing with a lot of bands, that I ought to play one of his records. So I got hold of his record of a tune called By a Waterfall, and uh, the record was cracked, and I took it home, and I had a studio at the time, de-ticked it, as they say, which means putting it on tape at a very fast speed and then cutting out the little clicks and pops and tried to make it good and re-equalized it. I even put it into a splitter and made stereo out of it just for laughs. But anyway, I took the record and I brought it in one day, and this is what happened at the close of that show. <laughs> to 76, was it, Rick? 76. The things we can remember easily, I think. I yeah. Hope. Rick James is here. He's been doing yeoman service with all kinds of interesting information. What do we have? Well, I remember uh, the 15th anniversary, a little little party down the hall. Yeah. And July 3rd of 1976, we were on the eve of what I think had to be the most glorious 4th of July in anyone's memory, any place, any time. An event so big with the tall ships in the harbor and everything else that the city's financial problems were forgotten for a moment. President Ford joined in the celebration here. The year 76 began with the PLO being seated at the U.N. in January. The Senate Intelligence Committee reports that the FBI, CIA, Army Intelligence, and other agencies have been illegally snooping into the affairs of private citizens. In June of 76, the U.S. ambassador to Lebanon was assassinated over there as problems flared in that nation that would continue through current times. On July 4th, while the U.S. celebrates the bicentennial, Israel stages the raid on Entebbe to rescue 103 hostages held by pro-Arab hijackers this was the summer of Legionnaires' disease in Philadelphia. Twenty-nine Legionnaires died after their convention there. In New York City, the first aerial tramway ever opened, connecting Manhattan and Roosevelt Island. For a, for a brief time, anyway. <laughs> it broke down five minutes later. <laughs> That's right. It's been hanging. Have you seen it hanging there? It looks awful. That's a shame. The cables began snapping. I almost uh, bought an apartment on, on that island, and a friend of mine who lived there advised me against it, and I thank him to this day. Thank you, Brian, if you're listening. <laughs> 1977. A fellow who went around the country the year before saying, Hi, my name is Jimmy. I want to be president. Actually became president. On January 21st, one day after taking office, Mr. Carter pardoned the Vietnam draft evaders. January 30th, TV history was made. The miniseries Roots attracted 130 million viewers. And that was on ABC TV. On April 9th of 1977, the Israeli Labor Party was defeated in the general elections. And that's when Prime Minister Menachem Begin came to power. 
On July 22nd of 77, Deng Xiaoping made a second return to power in China. He stayed there this time. The gang of four was purged. In the fall of 77, a crowded field of Democrats run for mayor of New York. There were a bunch of them. Mayor Abe Beam is retired initially by the voters, and a primary runoff is necessary then between the top two vote-getters, Ed Koch and Mario Cuomo. By 78, Ed Koch became mayor of New York City. He said it's the first of three terms that he'll serve in that office. On March 15th in Italy, terrorism once again spreads. Former Premier Aldo Moro is kidnapped. He is found murdered on May 9th. The Red Brigade's terrorist organization taking credit for that. On March 16th of 78, the Senate approved the treaty that will give Panama the Panama Canal. May 28th, we were kind of shocked. The uh, first-class postage stamp went up to 15 cents. It's now at 18. They're clamoring for 20. July 26th, the world's first test tube baby was born. Doesn't seem like that long ago. Yeah. On August 6th, Pope Paul VI dies. September 28th, Pope John Paul I dies just 34 days after taking office. On September 17th of 78, the Camp David Accord is unveiled. Israel and Egypt signing the documents called the Framework for Peace after 13 days with President Carter at Camp David. On November 20th, one of the big stories of the decade, the tragedy at Guyana, 911 bodies found at the Reverend Jim Jones People's Temple Settlement. In 79, problems that we're going to hit here started. The Shah fled Iran. By February 1st, the Ayatollah Khomeini was in power. On February 2nd, Patty Hearst was convicted of bank robbery charges. She did not serve time. She was freed under a clemency order. On March 28th of 79, conservatives won in England. Margaret Thatcher, the new prime minister there. April 18th, a day that will live in infamy perhaps, Lee Marvin ordered to pay $104,000 <laughs> in the first <laughs> palimony suit. Is he still carrying that on? I think he said he's going to the Supreme Court with it, didn't he? It's uh, still making its way. <laughs> That's a, the case. He's a rough old bird. I want to mess, want to mess with him. That's what Michelle said. <laughs> May 10th. The he East... said that about her, too. Well, I... <laughs> May 10th, the second big gasoline crunch hits. It was two years ago. We were thinking about vacation, but had no gas to get there. Mm. States began the odd even rationing. May 25th, 275 people died as a DC-10 crashed on takeoff from O'Hare in Chicago. July 17th of 79, the House Committee finds there was a conspiracy in the JFK assassination. They never really said what they thought it was, though. Mm. In the fall of uh, 79, the remains of two hurricanes moved through New Jersey, parts of New York State, heavy rains, flooding, lots of property damage around here. And November 4th of 79, U.S. hostages were taken in Iran. 1980, we started the spring with a nice transit strike. What a mess that was. In the fall, of course, of last year, Ronald Reagan winning a landslide victory over Jimmy Carter, and it appeared the nation had turned conservative. We're preoccupied much of 1980 with the hostage crisis in Iran. By fall, the entire area is aware of a water crisis because of the drought around New York. On to this year, which I guess... Um, kind of brings us up to date, doesn't it? Sure. We had the hostages freed on January 20th as President Carter left office. In March, and I hope this doesn't signal a cycle, we've seen cycles of violence, the attempt on President Reagan's life in Washington, he was shot in the chest. Oh, yeah. New Secretary Jim Brady... ...under a clemency order. On March 28th of 79, conservatives won in England. Margaret Thatcher, the new prime minister there. April 18th, a day that will live in infamy perhaps, Lee Marvin ordered to pay $104,000 <laughs> in the first <laughs> palimony suit. Is he still carrying that on? I think he said he's going to the Supreme Court with it, didn't he? It's uh, still making its way. <laughs> That's a, the case. He's a rough old bird. I want to mess, want to mess with him. That's what Michelle said. <laughs> May 10th. The he said that about her, too. Well, I, <laughs> May 10th, the second big gasoline crunch hits. It was two years ago. We were thinking about vacation, but had no gas to get there. Mm. States began the odd even rationing. May 25th, 275 people died as a DC-10 crashed on takeoff from O'Hare in Chicago. July 17th of 79, the House Committee finds there was a conspiracy in the JFK assassination. They never really said what they thought it was, though. Mm. In the fall of 79, uh, the remains of two hurricanes moved through New Jersey, parts of New York State, heavy rains, flooding, lots of property damage around here. And November 4th of 79, U.S. hostages were taken in Iran. 1980, we started the spring with a nice transit strike. What a mess that was. In the fall, of course, of last year, Ronald Reagan winning a landslide victory over Jimmy Carter, and it appeared the nation had turned conservative. We're preoccupied much of 1980 with the hostage crisis in Iran. By fall, the entire area is aware of a water crisis because of the drought around New York. On to this year, which I guess... Um, kind of brings us up to date, doesn't it? Sure. We had the hostages freed on January 20th as President Carter left office. In March, 
I hope this doesn't signal a cycle. We've seen cycles of violence. The attempt on President Reagan's life in Washington, he was shot in the chest. Oh, yeah. New Secretary Jim Brady shot through the brain. Secret Service agent and D.C. cop also injured there. Then it may, perhaps even more shocking, strangely we've become um, accustomed, sadly, to this type of violence in this country, but an attempt was made on the life of the Pope. Pope John Paul II gunned down in St. Peter's Square. He was in the hospital for about a month left, and he's back in the hospital again with uh, a virus problem growing from all that. And what may turn out to be one of the, the big political stories of this year, we'll wait and see, a coalition of conservative Democrats team up with minority Republicans in the House to score several successive victories for President Reagan over the liberal House leadership. Then in June, the baseball strike hit, and we learned the uh, Columbus Minor League Baseball team is called the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> and our engineer, Bob Horvath, who thought he had it on Cushy City, because <laughs> he got the duty to go do the Yankees games. Well, first of all, he was down in Lauderdale with the, you know, uh, down there during spring training, and... Uh, he had a good time, from what I understand. And now, you know, he's supposed to be in New York most of the time, but all of a sudden he's living in Cleveland. Columbus. I mean, Columbus. Uh, 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 Cleveland's bad enough. Columbus even worse. <laughs> now, careful. Howard no, no, was okay. just made man of Howard the year. Howard Cosell was the Cleveland man of the year, and somehow it just seems logical to me. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> he did. No, he said something very nice about uh, Cleveland on the air. But we do have the Columbus Clippers. As a matter of fact, we have them on tonight at 7.30, right after Art Rust Jr. does his sports talk show. And... Um, is that that kind of brings us up? That's to it. Except we're forgetting Joe. We can't do that. Joe Nolan is is standing at his uh, truncheon there, his uh, stanchion or whatever they <laughs> chain him up to, with WABC shadow traffic. And I am Joe Nolan with WABC shadow traffic. I do thank you kindly, sir, and I thank you, Rick James, because uh, I tell you, the, your contribution today has been enormous. I've never seen so many sheets of yellow newsroom paper and, uh, since, uh, you know, something major happened outside this place, and that's an incredible amount of work you've done. I really appreciate it. I may have gone over budget on the paper. <laughs> Could be grim for a while. <laughs> you mean I have to read off towels again?